And she brings the fire. So you see, but Gigi's gorgeous. So Gigi it's like, is you can't gorgeous. go wrong with her. You can't go wrong with you Gigi. Can't, you can't. It doesn't matter. And right, it right. was Kim. Hello, you're watching Behind the Scenes Beauty and Fashion Roundup 2019. I'm Derek Monroe, and joining me are some of the industry's hardest working artists in styling, makeup, and hair. Some coming fresh off the heels of getting their clients ready for this year's red carpet. Let's start with our stylist, celebrity stylist, Joy Yee Thorpe. Next to her, we have celeb stylist, Pooja Kalu, who just finished dressing his client, Stefan James, for this year's Met Gala. Also, we have with us celebrity makeup artist Morel Hollis, who is no stranger to the Met, as he has groomed the likes of Diddy and he did this year Travis Scott. We also have four time Emmy Award winning makeup extraordinaire Karen New Quiche. And one of the hardest working hairstylists I know, celebrity hairstylist Larry Sims, who is joining us after running around New York City doing three people for today's Met Gala. So the Met Gala is one of the biggest parties overseen by the Grand Diva herself, Anna Wintour. This is actually a fundraiser for the Metropolitan Museum of Art. And each year it comes with its own theme. And this year's theme is camp, notes on fashion. So we have here Joy Yee to tell us exactly what camp means. Camp can be interpreted in so many ways as we saw tonight, but basically camp is sort of kitschy. It's kind of a pretty ugly kind of situation where it's extravagant and everything is kind of blown out of proportion. And so you never know which way anyone's gonna go, but we saw tonight that many interpreted it very differently and it translated very differently to us, but it's gonna be fun to talk about. Well, Pooja, I'll ask you this question. Can you get camp on, like, because it is interpreted so many ways, so. I mean, I feel like the theme this year was a very nebulous, and I think people got lost and there was some confusion. Mm -hmm. So I think you can definitely get camp wrong. But the biggest thing I think from the theme would be to kind of be over the top, ostentatious, like Joy, you said, would you like to put it out there and just don't be afraid to try something different. So I think some people got it wrong, which is possible. A lot of people have to try and done it right. I think a lot of people played it very safe, um, but I enjoyed the people who did it. Yeah. I, don't, I mean, the thing is, it wasn't a lot of people that I thought looked bad. I just thought there were people that were just pretty, you yeah. know? They a lot of them, yeah. It was pretty makeup. Yeah, pretty makeup, and I saw I saw it this year too, and I saw it last year too. I think sometimes the celebs get a little bit, um, they take themselves a little too seriously, and it is great to stay on brand, but this is your night to show your personality, and for those actors and actresses and music artists that have no personality that we actually see, this was the night to actually show it. But also, I think it plays into the designers that people are wearing as well. Yeah, sometimes it isn't just the artist, it's the designer. They may have a specific aesthetic that they want to capture or they want to stick to, which may not be on theme. I know some brands like dictate the hair, the makeup, mm -hmm. everything. That's so. true. Absolutely, and that was the issue. Not even the issue that, but kind of the issue that I've run into with past years with doing that. It's like you, you become a little stagnant in terms of your own creativity, even if your client wants to push the button because there are people behind the scenes, like you know the brand and the stylist that, that really want to specify um, what the overall look should be. So I'm gonna pose this question to the YouTube because you guys knew ahead of time what, who you were working with. So how long in advance did you guys start planning for the Met? I started planning right after Oscars. So once we got the invite, started working on sketches, designs, trying to collaborate with uh, the brand, my client Will Burberry. So I worked with the design team to figure out what was the, what was the theme of the Met Gala, what was Stefan James' aesthetic, and then how did that couple with Burberry aesthetic? We learned very early on um, yeah, this was my first award season working with Denai, and she basically put me on hold. Which I love the brains that you did. Thank you. The, the Thank you thing. for the Oscars. Thank yeah. you, I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So, so like when I first started working with her, she like put me on hold for everything. Mm -hmm. And Gabrielle, she got her invite from her, um, the designer that dressed her. Um, so yeah, I did Denai, Gabrielle, and um, also Kiki Lynn. Does it change at the last minute? Mm -hmm. Once the sketch is approved like by everybody, by the celebrity, not, most of the time you're staying there unless in the fitting something goes wrong. You're typically staying there once that sketch and the fabric is approved. Yeah. I mean, what's great about you is that you're working with a guy. guy. So, so, <laughs> right. 
Right. Yeah. Cement is always easy to do. It, it's a lot easier. Uh, right, like today. Well, I, I want to, yeah, let's not discredit it. Let's not discredit the word. So, right. <laughs> well, like, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, but it's not as much that goes into it unless you have that particular guy, like an Ezra Miller or um, a Harry Styles who likes to kind of play and be a little bit more over the top, like that's their aesthetic. But some guys typically are oftentimes accessories to the women right. on the carpet. Absolutely. Right? And a lot of times designers will design it in that way where it's like they're going to, to me, like the Golden Globes or the Oscars. So I love when men take chances on the carpet and like try to step outside the box. Like Jared. Like Jared. Oh yeah, you look amazing. And it was Kim. Shout out Gabrielle and Dwayne. Like, oh yeah. You know, <laughs> The embellishments on his jacket that and especially with his headpiece, and right? And his headpiece, and I don't know if you got the angles of it, but there were like embellishments of a D on his hood. Oh, oh my god. Yeah. Oh, exactly. The things we miss sometimes. Yes. Yes. I got some BTS. So let's talk about some of us that get these last minute Met Gala phones. <laughs> so yeah. Morel, tell us about yours. Um it was not exactly last minute, last minute. I did find out last night. So I guess that's last <laughs> well, you had to uh, out. Which usually happens to me because everyone always thinks that I'm totally booked all the time. Or they think that I'm just gonna do pup every Met. So this time it was. I had to move around a lot of things in my schedule because you drop everything for Met. You just right. do. Right. <laughs> you understand, you understand right? right? Okay. Right. You know, I got you. So Karen, who did you have to do? Well, today, it wasn't too much of a last minute. I, uh, while I was in the, uh, over the weekend, I was in Los Angeles at the Emmys, and uh, I got a phone call, and uh, I was asked to do Jawan Jackson. He is, uh, he just got nominated for Tony Award for Ain't Too Proud to Bed. And uh, I went in today and did his makeup, and it was fantastic. Yeah, I also work with uh, the lead from that show. He's Tony nominated as well. His name is Derek Baskins. And he decided to go with a slick back hair look. And I think I got the phone call at about mm, it like two very early. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> On my way here. Okay. It was like a stop. On, off and pressed him out and it was dope. But, but I was that, that's this freelance. Is this, is, this is our life. Whether you get called before or called after, it's still a part. And of you know what? I will say they didn't really get a lot of red carpet shine, but Tom Brown dressed them and Tom Brown, as a menswear designer, when we're talking about men going there, they went there, I think. Yes. That's Tom Brown's aesthetic. Like, yeah. Tom Brown yeah. has like the, the, the short, he's known for the short suit, yeah. the short pants, like the cuff, the brogue. And the, the skirt. Suit. Yeah, the skirt is yeah. well. Okay, so Pujay and Julie, since you guys are fashion, who were y'all's top two? Well, it's my, uh, my top was the woman who just made the entrance and started the show, which is Lady Gaga. She started it for me yeah. and ended it for me. Yeah. She rolled in theatrical, her makeup, her hair, the bows, the yeah, dress. Four. She took off one dress, there was another dress. She took off one dress, it was burlesque. She was naked at the end. She, <laughs> she was dragging around a car. I mean, it was theater. It was like, it, like, can she get an Oscar? Because this was yeah. like a 30 minute right. short film, right. a silent short film that I enjoyed. <laughs> and a lot of people was like, performance in. I mean, <laughs> I loved it. I loved it. And it was hard to beat. So my next one, I gotta say, was Michael Kors and Gigi Hadid. I love how they rolled in together. And I love the subtlety of Gigi's kind of makeup and her being all covered up and it looked really decadent. So I'm torn, but I loved Michael Kors and Gigi Hadid. I mean, she looked so decadent. She came in with like very pretty makeup, little lashes, it looked little feathers, little and white. yeah, and had like her headpiece, and everything was campy. And I also like Janelle Monet. Wait, okay, so there's two. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Ironically, I also love Janelle Monet. She was one of my top two. She was in Christmas Siriano. I think she killed it. She brought it with the hair, the makeup, um, the look from head to toe. Uh, she, she, hit, she hit the theme, and that's Janelle, I think, in her everyday life. So to see her be able to play on this stage um, was re really good. And from a man's perspective, I love Jared Leto and Gucci. Um, he had like this red cape with like all this embellished like diamonds and rhinestones on with a uh, mannequin of his head that looked very much like him today. It had the perfect bed head. So I would go with Janelle, <laughs> Monet, and Jared Leto for 
two of my top two, but there were so many others that I loved as well. Yeah. Janelle also had like what three hats on or something like that. Was it just one? Were they Larry Sims hats? I mean, it should have been. It should have been. <laughs> and I feel like okay, so Larry, let's yeah. hear about here. Who, who, who did you love? And Larry, since you did three people, you can't say your oh, vote. So you have to expand yourself outside of your life. <laughs> of course you love your people. Well, who else did you love? But he killed it though. Okay. You did. Yeah, he always kills it. That's Thank what he does. Hands down. Yeah, I appreciate Hello. it. Outside of Gabrielle, Kiki. <laughs> <laughs> no, but let's say Kiki though. No. I really did love Kiki. You can't Kiki say one. I love the colors in the in the bang and the exaggerated bun. Because they complement their dress so much. Thank you. Thank you. Outside of my girls, like I, I really love in terms of like the theme of campiness. I love Sierra. Mm -hmm. I love the I the shape of the hair. I loved the execution of it. I love the over the topness of it. And, and she just is a girl that is a fashion girl that we've mm -hmm. all loved and admired and, and has respected, at least I have. And, and and she's a girl that is a risk taker and I love that she is finding like this this voice in, in this space of fashion. And you know, I just recently worked with her um, for the Billboard Awards and just in conversation. You know, she is a fashion girl. It was my first time working with her. And it, she's amazing, yeah. And, and I love the fact that she committed in the way that she did for, for this particular Met um, experience. And then also, I mean, as far as hair is concerned, I think that it's not always about the hair. Sometimes it's about the story. And I love the headpiece that Jennifer Lopez had on. Yes. You didn't see any yes. of it. You just, like, I agree. It, you know, I'm, I'm a sucker for being a team player. And whoever styled her, you know, was, yeah, it's amazing. She always brings it, though, J-Lo. Brings it. She Every didn't time. need any hair. Uh -huh. She just needed that headpiece. Yeah. Yeah. But did it feel too reminiscent of the Ri Rihanna that it feel? Well, no, Rihanna's was different. I think that it was different, but you know, like the thing about Jennifer is that she's one person that I can say is spot on and consistent yes. all, all the time. Yeah. Right? Yeah. She brings the fire, so she knows her lane too. Yeah, well, she understands even on the carpet, she extended her legs. She knew her body. Uh, yeah, it was. It was. She's a incredible. sex pop. She's yeah. <laughs> so those are my favorite too. My favorite hair was I did love Lady Gaga. I love the vibe and I love the attention to detail in the bows and the mm -hmm. hair and mm -hmm. the wig. I just thought it was very well done without being too much. I think it was kitschy, I think it was campy, but not too out there in your face. Like you had to pay attention and be like, wow. And I have to go with uh, Cardi B. I mean, when you say a story, because she didn't have a lot of hair, but the fact that she was willing to, you know, Go all there with the headpiece and just the color and just everything. I love it. So I love it too. She's a top. I will fit her hair. She, she murdered it. Top. Yeah. She would definitely a top. Definitely. Yeah, she murdered it. Okay. Okay, so makeup. Well, uh, it just seems like we all love uh, Lady Gaga. <laughs> when she hit those stairs, I'm telling step stairs, whatever the red carpet, she looked amazing. From head to toe, her makeup was so like futuristic. As yes. the lashes was full from the, the top and the bottom, it was everything. Mm -hmm. Smoky eye. I mean, her makeup artist did her thing, and she's she's a fashion icon. So whenever she goes on anything, even if she's on a rock red carpet for radio, I mean radio for music or anything, like she always hits it, and it's always a number one with her. So Gaga was definitely my number one. And Billy Porter, he was giving me very campy makeup. I love all the jewels around his eyes. His skin was porcelain. I, it was just, it was lovely. And it was very fashion forward. And it was, and he was ready. So whoever did his makeup, <laughs> sorry. I loved it. I was impressed. I loved it. I'm obsessed with it. Hey, Morel. I'm a big fan of Erin Parson. Um, she worked with Maybelline. She does Gigi Hadid a lot. Tonight, she did an amazing look on Gigi Hadid, which I love. Mm -hmm. The detail in the lashes were amazing. Like, they were strategically placed just right to give that, that, I don't even know how to explain it, but it translated 
two lashes. See, but Gigi's gorgeous. Gigi so like, is you can't gorgeous. go wrong with her. You can't go wrong with Gigi. You can't, it doesn't matter. You can't matter. go wrong with Gigi. You can't 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 go wrong with Gigi. It still was campy for Sierra. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was extra, and it did not overpower the hair. Oh, the hair was everywhere. The hair was a show. <laughs> the the hair was show. Was and so you have to make sure that you compliment your partners and yes. who you're working with. Well, you yes. have to give so we, we have a who was the hairstylist? Who's the hairstylist? The hairstylist was Caesar Moran. Oh, Caesar! I love Caesar. Caesar He's it. wonderful. Your overall. So we've given some. You got any overall people that you just feel like hair, makeup, it all came together and collided into a beauty store? Billy, Billy Porter. Okay. I think he killed it from head to toe. He, his entrance, like, it was literally a performance. It was a small performance. So Billy Porter wore the blondes. Um, he came in uh, on top of like six guys, mm -hmm. and then he came, stepped off, and had these amazing wings. Uh, he was so, like the queen of Sheba. Yeah, they were bringing it in. Yeah. I love it. Okay. Exactly. All right. Yeah. So from head to toe, I think the team worked well together. It was definitely a collaboration. There were conversations had. It was perfect execution of the theme, and I think Billy Porter was another one that owned the night. Uh, you know, for me, it was Gaga. And you know, I don't ever, I'm not like always in love with Gaga on the carpet, but to me tonight, it was her wheelhouse, her show. She was like, yeah, mm. yeah and she did it. You know, I, I'm a sucker for commitment. I'm a sucker for layers. I come from a performance background with being a dancer. So like, I love a girl that over commit, so I have to say, the story that Lady Gaga told tonight was genius. And since you guys already said Lady Gaga, I don't wanna keep harping on her even though she was my favorite, but I also really wanted to give an honorable mention to Lena Waite. Uh, on the back of her jacket, it said, you know, uh, Black Drag Queen started this, and I think yes. that's so important that she put that out there. there. Black Drag Queen has started camp. Started camp, yes. exactly. Right. And I, she, she was wearing um, Harry Moss, and she was with the designer, uh, Kirby, the vocal on the carpet. And I love what he's been doing as well. He's been using his platform to make political statements and to really shift the conversation and shift the culture. And also on the back of Linda's jacket were lyrics to a Diana Ross song as well. Like they were the pinstripes going down her jacket. So awesome. I love really that they cool. use awesome. Fashion's nice. Biggest Night to make that statement. Yeah. Karen? Actually, I loved Cardi B. Yes. Yeah. I loved From Head to Toe. I loved her headpiece, her garment, her stylist is a beast. Colin Carter is Colin awesome. Carter. They are forced to be reckoned with. She also wore Tom Brown as well, which was a surprise because it's a big shift from Tom Brown's normal silhouette. Cardi B is mine also. Uh -oh. Cardi B is honestly, when I saw that dress, <laughs> And I saw, all I saw was rings. And I was like, what is happening? Like, it truly stopped me in my tracks. Yep. Um, the makeup was gorgeous, the handpiece was gorgeous. Okay, thank you all. And can you tell us where we can find you on your social? You can find me on Instagram and Twitter at ApuJ. The underscore Joy on Instagram and all of my social. I am at Larry Gerard Sims on all of my feeds. And Larry, tell us very quick about your hat. So, this is one of my beautiful joints. Yes. <laughs> the Larry Sims Collection by Central Avenue. Really proud of it. Known for rocking hats. Go and check it out. Link in my tab and all of my social. We're dropping our summer joints with a lot of color. We're excited about it. Nice. Okay. I am Karen Dukish. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so much. Now she was good at talking. And I am at Morel Hollis on all platforms. And mine is Derek Monroe. Thank you all for watching. See you next time. <laughs>